an exciting new look. Windows XP is so exciting. This is so new to us, this Windows XP. XP has been out for so long now. We've almost become accustomed to this user interface. It's the standard for us now. Notice that we're also getting messages about setup completing in 39 minutes. It's installing Windows. It's going through a big process here. So now it's going to begin the process of copying a lot of files down, setting up the programs, and getting some things done. And during this process, it will prompt us for more information as we go along. The first prompt that we get for our Windows XP setup is to set up the region and language options. We want to set up this to be the US keyboard layout that's going to use English in the United States. Our location is set to United States. And we could, of course, change or modify this configuration. But that looks good with me. So we'll click Next. Now we need to put in the full name and name of our organization. I'll put in my name and the organization. And we will click Next. And now we need the product key from the back of our Windows XP folder. I'm going to put in my XP product key. You will not be able to see this on your side. I'm making this so you can't see my product key. I don't want you to use mine. And we'll click Next. Now Setup has suggested a name for our computer. If our computer is on the network, it'll tell us what name to use. Or we can take the default. And I have no idea why this is such a bad name that's there. But we'll call this computer also Professor. Maybe we'll do it the same as Windows Vista does and put a dash PC at the end of it. And if we want to put in an administrator password, I highly recommend that you do that on your new install of Windows XP, regardless of where it will be and what you will be doing with it. So put in a password and click Next. What is the date and time? And I'm in Eastern time. So we're actually going to change that right now. So at the very beginning, we've got this set up in the right time zone. We'll click Next, and it'll go through the network configuration. For networking, we've got a couple of options right out of the gate. One is typical settings, and one is custom settings. For almost everybody, typical settings tends to work OK. But if you need to manually configure different aspects of the network, you can always go into the custom settings configuration. We'll click Next, and it says, do you want this this computer to be on a domain, or is it going to be on a work group? Well, in this particular case, it will be on a work group. Uh, for this work group uh, configuration, I'm going to give it the name of, of where it sits in this work group. It's in the Florida work group. And click Next. And now we start copying some files. So it's going to go through the process of going through and downloading and pulling off the CD a lot of the files that are there. Now that the basic installation is over, we're going to reboot. And hopefully, we'll be up and running in Windows XP. When we first start up for the very first time, we have Windows XP saying to improve appearance of visual elements, Windows will automatically adjust our screen resolution, which sounds good. If this all works, it's going to give you a message saying, click OK to continue. And that does look good to us. VirtualBox continues now to run the Windows XP operating system. We now have our initial setup and saying, please wait. When you first start Windows XP, you get this startup program that gives you a little bit of audio and says, welcome. Thanks for purchasing. Let's spend a few minutes setting up your computer. All right, we'll click Next. Please wait a moment. Windows checks to see if this computer is connected to the internet. You can have it go out there and connect. And we're going to say, yes, we're going to connect through our home network. And we'll click Next. It says, do you want to activate now? I'll remind me every few days. I'm not going to activate at this point. I want to take you through the install. Who will use this computer? And we'll give myself a username on this computer. And we're done. The computer is configured for internet access. We've got a user account. And we click Next. And it begins the normal Windows XP startup process. Here is our default Windows desktop. You can see my username is here. It's got the default Windows XP background. Tells me that new programs are installed and gives me messages that I need to now get started with the operating system. And there we go. We've got Windows XP running, the installation program relatively straightforward, only a couple of reboots. And now we're able to take advantage of the XP operating system.
After installing any operating system, there's a number of things that you should do afterwards. And these are really very common regardless of the operating system you're using. First, we want to make sure it works. Did we get to a desktop? Were there any error messages? Were there any problems during the installation or after the installation that we need to address? It might give us an idea if there's a hardware that is not supported or software that's not supported. We're probably going to get a message about that. Many people will burn in the system. They'll let it sit for a day, especially if it's a brand new computer running this operating system, and make sure there's no problems with the hardware. Once you finish an install, especially of Windows, check to make sure you've got the latest service pack. Check to make sure certainly you've got the latest security patches. And you may need to do driver updates as well. All three of these can be done through Windows Update. If the driver that you need is not in Windows Update, you'll want to go to the manufacturer's website for that hardware and see if they have a driver for that operating system. And you should know that already because, of course, prior to installing the operating system, you did your due diligence and made sure that everything on your computer you had updated drivers for, of course. And lastly, any application updates. If there's apps that run in the operating system or third-party applications, you want to be sure you have the latest versions of those for this new operating system that you've installed. Let's review what we've learned about installing Windows XP. Our first question, what is the minimum amount of memory required for Windows XP Home and Windows XP Professional? Well, if you think about that minimum amount, it was 64 megabytes. A paltry 64 meg gets us up and running in Windows XP. And if you recall, 128 meg was the, the one that was recommended to be up and running once you got Windows installed. Our next question, how can you check your computer hardware for compatibility with Windows XP? And what you'll want to do is run the Windows XP Upgrade Advisor and check your system compatibility all from there. And the last question, what post-install process provides significant updates to the operating system? There is something we can run once we're done with our installation of our operating system, and that's a service pack install. Make sure we've got the service packs, the security patches, and the latest drivers. And Windows Update generally will take care of all of that for us. Well, that covers what we need to know about installing Windows XP and getting up and running with that operating system. If you need more a videos you'd like to see and participate in any of our message boards and much more, you can visit our website at freeaplus.com.